Hey guys, how's it going today? Well, I'm Aaron and I'm the video guy here at Grin and usually I'm behind the camera and I still will be, but uh, I want to explain this crazy death trap that we're going to be converting to electric. It's called a dirt surfer. And uh, when I was like 16, my mom got me one and then I wound up riding on the team in Canada and uh, flying around Germany and riding in skate parks and downhill races and off-road races and stuff like that. But that's actually the reason why I got into electric bikes is because uh, I knew how to ride a dirt surfer and a guy in Calgary had an electric dirt surfer that he wanted to demo at an event. So anyways, it's now extinct. You can't get them anymore. But a friend of mine had uh, like six sitting in his garage and he wanted me to get rid of a few for him and uh, I told him why don't, why don't we convert one to electric first. Here's the other two models back here. This one it would be the street model and this one would be the off-road model because it's got a flexi deck in the middle. I think this is going to be a really fun one to do because the wheels are 16 inch like kid size and that means that they're gonna be really torquey with the fast shangy motor. The Dirt Surfer is pretty cool. It's got a disc brake here that you activate like this and we're gonna put a shangy motor on here and then we're gonna lock the clutch because then we were able to activate regen with this brake throttle right here that we installed. And then we're gonna have a front post that you lean forward to activate that'll be your throttle or accelerator. So we're gonna put LIGOs on the underside of this and I think three LIGOs will have enough range to maybe go around 25, 30 kilometers. Obviously you're not pedaling like a bike so you can't really extend that range. And uh, then a base render controller, Shangyi on the back. It's gonna come together really fun. And it's also gonna be fun to watch the guys at Grin showcase their skills in putting it together. Two LIGOs, Two LIGOs awesome, easy, friggin' LIGOs easy. This would also look pretty badass, eh? No. What about, what about like this? So like, all right, so like that clears and then there's no way that would bottom out when you go over curves and stuff. Any reason why you'd have that angled that way? Looks more aerodynamic. Woo! Good thing they're indestructible. You could drop off a curb and there's almost no way you would clip that. This is like a little just more square. Because like, this is yeah. actually further down than just like stacking two of them. Fuck <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the front. Like I imagine that yeah. more often it's this. It's back. I mean, you can just tell from the scratch marks, right? Like this it doesn't look like it's bottomed out yeah, much at all. This, right, that's where it's bottomed out. But that, that's where you're just grinding down railings and stuff, right? No, you don't do that. You're just hopping up a staircase. You, don't, you, don't you do sure? I thought slides. I saw you do that. I don't think I've ever done a board yeah. slide. Yeah. No, it wasn't like a, like a triple decker staircase, and you were just like. Phew. So now let's look at the throttle control. Um, so let's spin this. Yeah, so between these two throttle options, so that, yeah, because the pivot point here is right there rather than being concentric. This just feels it's better quality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it is. It, it's a much thicker, much beefier uh, plastic connection. So, yeah, here you could do something kind of fun, I think. So, here you could actually have a tube coming off of there that this clamps onto and then just link this directly to the, the caliper. Yeah. Oh. Isn't and that pretty just, slick? Yeah. So the only downside of this is that as the brake pad wears, the range will change. Whereas oh, if yeah. we go off here, then oh, it's a little bit, so, oh, I mean, that's just so easy. <laughs> I kind of like just a go. bar right across there. The only thing is you have to make sure that when the, this isn't blocking, so like that's, that's running gonna, pretty tight. Whereas he, here, there's no tire collision risk. So hook this up to a cycle analyst, look at the throttle input, and just see where the voltage actually starts moving up yeah. um, so that you don't mount it in a way where the first bit of motion is anything. You really want it to just start, the voltage to start moving right away right. so that we get that electric yeah. control before the mechanics kicks in. Yeah. You know, we'll want to open that motor up and then, yeah, just have Robert go in there and then just TIG weld that without even taking it apart. And then it'll be nice to just showcase what you know, an at-home way of doing a lock clutch can kind of look like. Okay, so fully in your guys' hands. This will be pre-tension, so we take out zero. When the brake is pressed here, we're gonna start getting more and more regen right there. That SX motor packs so much power. If you get a flaming galah, it'll knock the Vegemite out of you. All right, so this is the part here that we just 3D printed and catted. So I'm gonna grab that, it's on the plate. It's going to go on to the throttle. All right, here we'll get the visual test fit. This is so you can get a good sense of how hard you're pressing. So, and then push your leg and it goes forward. So we're gonna heat this up so it can bend and conform to the throttle there. 
and that way we'll have even pressure across it once we screw it down. It's not gonna melt on, I didn't get it that hot. It's just, it's just gonna be formed, yeah. Yeah, I'd hate to have to hit print again. All right, now the time of reckoning. Do the holes line up. Yay! What we need to start doing now is extend the little throttle switch, and that's going to now be extended so that if you press on the brake really hard, it doesn't snap it back and stop braking. We want it to continually brake, and so we need to extend it longer so that as the bar moves, it has full contact. How long will this take? Uh, this one probably take about 15 minutes. All right, so we just printed our e-brake throttle extension piece. We're gonna take that out here. It's a nice little small piece there. So yeah, this is you're gonna attach to the other throttle. It's the exact same throttle, but this one's for the brake. All right, so we're gonna take the LIGOs. We already have the holes here on the board, so we're ready to mount them. We're just gonna put plates on the LIGOs and yeah, attach it there. So these are the alum little aluminum uh, brackets that we have here. This is just to take off the force from that. Uh, these were just cut out of aluminum plate and then just tidied up the edges, made them look a little fancy, and then, then brushed them a little bit to get the dirt off. All right, so with the base runner, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it against the metal plate here as we want the heat to dissipate from the heat sink on the bottom into the bottom of this. And so we're gonna put a LIGO on top of this and so everything's held together all nice. So later on, we might mount a plate in between the base runner and the LIGO to keep the LIGO from flexing, but at least with our first tests, it doesn't seem like it will be necessary. Make the, have the base runner controller that you've just got tucked away in here with no airflow. Have yeah. that be bolted to a piece of aluminum plate, at least an eighth of an inch, maybe five millimeters thick. And that aluminum plate should extend all the way to the sides of these two tubes. Okay. Because this strip here and this strip here have airflow passing by them. Oh, at the very so, edges. At the edges. So either side of that. So the, la the, the base runner can still sit totally hidden above the battery in the middle. Okay. But now there's a heat dissipation path that goes sideways to this area where there's airflow. And that will allow the controller to go much longer before running into thermal rollback okay. okay. So yeah, so I, I would do that. Uh, and then that also gives a means of independently securing the plate to the LIGO by just having a screw into that aluminum plate. As with a lot of dropouts, you gotta file the paint away and maybe a little more. But this I'm hoping will just slide in because we're gonna be taking the motor off eventually. I'm hoping that I filed enough away so that this will just slide right on. And oh yeah, all the way in there, nice and easy. Looks great. So Sydney's heat sink turned out brilliant, as you can see. Um, and then he had to make a little spacer, so we didn't want to drill any more holes in the top of the, the dirt surfer platform. It's alive. Wow. <laughs> Exciting. Let's wrap up these wires. And yeah, we're ready to test ride it. So guys, this is the moment of truth. We've got the motor installed. We've got the accelerator installed. The brake lever is not currently activating regen because the next part of the project is locking the clutch inside the Shengyi. But um, it's exciting because uh, we get to go try it out. We don't know what the sensitivity is going to be like on this. We haven't played with that. So this is the first test ride that you're going to see. But... It might go like a jackrabbit. Oh, it's heavy now. All right, 
once you figure it, once you find it, you got it. Oh boy, it has good torque. No top speed, but good torque. Woo! <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it goes pretty good. So we're gonna definitely have to work on the arm for accelerating. Man, it went up that hill as if like it had no idea there was a hill. That's awesome. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo!